Stand up South Africa. Make sure that South Africa, you are counted with me. Run South Africa. Stand and make sure that our people understand that the need to be revolution in South Africa is guaranteed that under the EFF, this country will be the better. EFF is a COVID thing. Revolutionary greetings to the people of South Africa, Africa and the world. My name is Titus Tsungur Kotsadam Senwo Natsualeka and today we are coming to you from Arabas uh, Stadium here in Kimberley where the EFF uh, held the 10th or rather the 11th anniversary celebration and uh, just to make sense of the EFF as 11 years of unbroken struggle. I'm joined by the CCT member, Commissar uh, Nobile Mthongo, just to reflect on the EFF, particularly on the issues of women representation. We, you know, August is Women's Month, so she's here with me just to traverse the journey that was the EFF uh, is turning 11, Commissar. Thank you very much for making time and uh, welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Titus. Mm -hmm. Let's first greet uh, the Commander-in-Chief, the whole Central Command team, and the fighters of the EFF who do the daily work of the EFF. Mm -hmm. They are very important to the lifeblood of the EFF. Mm -hmm. So we are happy that we are now 11 years old. Yeah. It has been a great journey to uh -huh. arrive here. Indeed. Uh, it feels like 2013 was just yesterday mm -hmm. when the EFF started, mm -hmm. uh, and people were mocking it that, in fact, other people were saying, if it a fail, yeah. Uh, they thought we'll just disappear. Interesting. Little uh, did they know yeah. that 11 <laughs> years later, yeah. we'll still be here mm -hmm. with having representation across all three spheres of government in uh, local government, provincial legislatures, and in parliament. Mm -hmm. It feels good to be a member of EFF. Yeah. We took a wise and correct decision in 2013 mm -hmm. to form an organization. Mm -hmm. We're happy to be still here, yeah. and we're happy that. EFF continues to grow against Tumseas. Mm -hmm, indeed. And the 1990s generation or the years in 1990 it marked the end of the liberation struggle which provided a window of opportunities for women to take part uh, in spheres of government like you have highlighted what are some of the success stories of the EFF when it comes to women representation uh, uh, the EFF mm -hmm. they don't say things that they don't practice mm -hmm. what we like about the EFF mm -hmm. the EFF has ensured that women are a central part mm -hmm. of the struggle of economic freedom in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Now look at the leadership of the EFF from the Central Command Team across, uh, in the provinces, in the regions, and even in the branches. The officials of the EFF, three of them are women, and if you check the CCT, mm -hmm. more than 55% uh, of the CCT members mm -hmm. is women. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to parliament, now that's where the cream is. That's the chair on top. Mm -hmm. More than 60% of the, the members <laughs> of parliament, <laughs> yeah. they are women. <laughs> yeah. that, that can only happen in the caucus of the EFF. Mm -hmm. If you check our representation in the NCOP, we've got eight members of the NCOP. Six of them are women. Now, that tells you how serious the EFF takes the issue of women representation ensures that uh, women in the EFF are a central part of decision makings. Mm -hmm. They know that the, the leadership of the EFF appreciates that there's nothing that can happen without women being at the center of all decision making. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why as young women in the EFF, we're happy to have a voice, we're happy to be represented, represented like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. We not only have a voice, we take central part of decision making. Mm -hmm. Look at the chairperson of the EFF National. Mm -hmm. He's a woman who chairs and convenes meetings of the EFF yeah. National. Veronica yes, yeah. that's good. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. And we look at uh, Burkina Faso, Rwanda, uh, Kenya, and Tanzania, among other African countries, where they have a constitutional uh, quota uh, when it comes to uh, representation or a party quota. But South Africa doesn't have uh, you know, constitutional or party quota when it comes to you know, female representation in, in, in the National Assembly. Perhaps do you think we can learn something from these African countries? Definitely, we need to learn something from uh, these African countries uh, like uh, Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. uh, check uh, during the time of uh, Thomas Sankara. Mm -hmm. He ensured that women, he were, in fact, he even said that there is no revolution that can take place without putting women at the center of it. Mm -hmm. So for us to achieve a revolution, we need women to be at the center of it. So I think it's something we can learn from mm -hmm. uh, as South Africa mm -hmm. to ensure that we pass legislation that ensures that uh, in all spheres of government, there's 50% representation of the women. 
what Titus uh, viewers need to understand, or South Africans need to understand, 55% mm -hmm. of the voters role of South Africa is comprised of only women. But then you see parties, they send people, men alone into <laughs> parliament, parliament, into legislature, yeah. Yeah. and into uh, councils. And you wonder why when 55% of the voter population of South Africa mm -hmm. is women, mm -hmm. it should come naturally that representation everywhere else should comprise of 55% women. Mm -hmm. Even in, in the executive, South Africa has never had a female president. True, Our true, first true, female true. Uh, president were denied, which is Uma Mawini Matigizela Mandel. That's the president who were denied in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I wonder where we would be as a country today had Mama Mawini Matigizela mm -hmm. became the first black female president of this country. Mm -hmm. A and lot should have been achieved during that time. Yeah, and now we're talking about the new uh, Chief Justice, who is a female, yeah, uh, yeah. Chief Justice uh, Mandisa Maya. Maya. Does that uh, underscores the importance of women, or does that reflect that indeed women are capable to lead? Exactly, it reflects that. But also I think we should highlight that it was the EFF mm -hmm. that advocated for Justice Maya to be appointed as Chief Justice in, in, the, first place. in the first place, uh -huh. instead of Zondo. <laughs> yes. Because we indicated, the Zondo. <laughs> yes, we indicated yeah. that Zondo, uh, his years in the uh, in, 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 um, justice has come to an end in the Constitutional Court. He's left with few months in office. Mm. Why then appoint him when you've got a yeah. more than capable person uh, in the name of Chief Justice Maya, who, who should necessarily be appointed, who are very mm. happy. It was us who advocated for that. You see now other people are celebrating. They forget it was the EFF. In fact, it was the commander-in-chief in those interviews who ensured and led in the JSC, mm -hmm. who ensured and led that charge that Chief Justice Maya must be appointed. We're the ones who are supporting her. In fact, we still support her. We're very happy. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to transforming the justice for her, to transform the justice system of this country, mm -hmm. and ensuring that cases of women Women, cases of gender-based violence are prioritized. You will remember EFF has always advocated that um, we need specialized courts to deal mm. with issues of gender-based violence in true. this country Absolutely. so that they are speedily resolved. Issues of gender-based violence, rape, and uh, crimes against children. Mm -hmm. This, the EFF has always advocated for that until mm -hmm. to this day mm -hmm. there's nothing that has happened. We hope we can take this charge and take it to Chief Justice Maya and into Parliament mm -hmm. to ensure that it actually happens in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And issues of gender-based violence are very rife in South Africa and it remains uh, one of the thorniest issues that we're grappling with. Now, as we observe Women's Month, what do you think the focus should be uh, to ensure that, you know, women women's rights are protected to ensure that the dignity of women is protected to ensure that uh, women representation is not only a lip service but it's something that is done indeed uh, that does look i think firstly we mm. need to appreciate in south africa that we must not narrow or only it down the issue of women to nine august it should be something that happens 365 days of the year mm. So how do we do that? Firstly, we need to implement policies that protect women. Mm -hmm. How do we protect women? Um, I think the EFF advocated when they were amending uh, legislation on issues of gender-based violence mm -hmm. that the issue of uh, gender-based violence and domestic violence, why do we only allow the one who has been abused to open a case? If I'm a neighbor mm -hmm. and I experience a domestic violence, I must be able to, I must be allowed to report it to the police and the police must be able to open a case. Mm -hmm. But until the person who's violated and abused opens a case, there's absolutely nothing that the police can do. So we need to amend legislation like that in order absolutely. to protect mm -hmm. women of this country. Mm -hmm. So there's still a lot that needs to be done to protect women and children and all vulnerable people mm -hmm. in our society. Mm -hmm. So I think we still have a long way to go. We are, we are trying, but we, we, we really have a long way to go. We need to put women out there, but also we need to ensure there's legislation that protect women mm -hmm. in this country. Do you think the GNU is the right form of government oh. to protect women <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. advance their interest? <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. You will remember that um, Ramaphosa with the scandal of Palapala that has that he has hanging over his head. Mm -hmm. Uh, the domestic worker there was abused and oh, fetched yeah. brutally. So that's who Ramaphosa is, uh, who has no care and will not protect the rights of women of this country. And if you look in the DA, uh, the, in fact, it's not GNU, it's a grand coalition of the <laughs> ANC <laughs> and <yes>. DA. <laughs> now, if you look the people they've brought to the DA, DA is not only racist, but 
they undermine women. Look at all, how they treat all the previous uh, black women leaders of the DA. Where are they today? They threw them in the outskirts. In fact, when they were throwing them away, they said that they are sending them to start. They forget to send Natasha Mazun to go and start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they forget to send John Stenhouse <laughs> to lead. go and start. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so uh, uh, this grand coalition of the DNNC, mm -hmm. unfortunately, is here to make us to regress as a country. Mm -hmm. It's taking us 10 steps back. Mm -hmm. We're taking two steps forward, and then we take 10 steps back. Mm -hmm. So women issues will not be prioritized under this grand coalition of the DA. Mm -hmm. We must forget about it. Uh, it has already started. Look what the DA says. It says that NSFAS should be a loan, that students must be able to pay it back mm -hmm. after they have completed their studies. So those are the steps that the DA is doing to ensure that the country regresses. Mm -hmm. So as women of this country, we are alone. The only weapon we have in our hands at this point is the economic freedom fighters. That's where we get protection and shield Absolutely. from societal ills. Mm -hmm. And we should not just observe Women's Month uh, periodically. I mean, we have things like uh, 16 days of activism, but we, 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 we as the EFF, we also have the gender-based violence desk where we address these issues on yeah. a daily issue, which you know uh, confirms that the EFF is always on the side of the people. Now, let's talk about the youth and women in politics. What do you think should be the role of women? Do you think women uh, should step up and ensure that they participate as much as uh, their male uh, uh, counterparts. Uh, correct, uh, Titus. Women should participate, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, more actively than men in politics. Like mm -hmm. I've previously said, more than 55% of the voter population of this country mm -hmm. is women. You can go to any municipality. There's no municipality where uh, the representation of women is less than 50% mm -hmm. in terms of voter population. Mm -hmm. That tells us that women Without women, this country will not be able to move forward. We need more women to participate in politics of this country in order to address any injustices against them. The EFF uh, decision to establish a gender-based violence desk was correct. It has assisted a lot of women who don't find comfort and joy in the police stations and everywhere else. They run to the EFF to help them, to assist them to open cases. And in one of the... Uh, you are right, we can't just celebrate 16 days of activism, uh, have that uh, 16 days where we're active between November and December. Mm -hmm. These are daily issues. These are daily issues. Women get mm -hmm. killed on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Women disappear. Women die on a daily basis at the hands of loved ones and at the hands of total strangers. So it should be something that happens 365 days of the year. Um, and also the issue of women should be celebrated throughout mm -hmm. uh, the year because women are central at the backbone of this country. Look at the men. Men who are even working is women who are at home taking care of children. Even if you are a working woman, you still come back, have the responsibility to build a home, build a warm home for your mm -hmm. own family. Even if you go to work like your man or you know, like your husband. Mm -hmm. So we are still expected to carry this more responsibilities as women. Mm -hmm. So more should be done in this country. The EFF is leading that. Uh, if I was Cyril Ramaphosa, I was going to copy the good things that are being done by my opponents. Mm -hmm. You don't have to like your opponents, but if they're doing something great, just copy it. Mm -hmm. If uh, at the police stations will implement what the EFF is suggesting in terms of protecting women, mm -hmm. where women must be given dignity, it's even simple things. The EFF has always advocated that mm -hmm. um, sanitary towels should be free and oh, accessible yes, to all. Yes, it's yes. a program that the Students' Command has mm -hmm. always led mm -hmm. in the institutions where we lead the SRC. Mm -hmm. So those are the small things. Look at our events. There's yeah. no event of EFF that without takes place sanitary without sanitary yeah. towels. Mm -hmm. It's a good step. You can undermine it if you are a privileged yeah. person who's got access to sanitary towel. But to that person in need mm -hmm. is something very great. Mm -hmm. They always look forward to that. Mm -hmm. There's been always been concerns around the issues of equality or inequality in South Africa. We look at uh, Banyana Banyana and Bafana Bafana. There's oh, yes. always the gender parity issue about the, the, the pay, the payout. Do you think Bafana Bafana or rather Banyana Banyana deserve to be paid equally to their male uh, counterparts? 
Exactly. Firstly, Bafana mm -hmm. and Banyana Banyana players, when they go to the pitch, mm -hmm. they both play 90 minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 90 minutes. <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a male, you all mm -hmm. play for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. And Banyana Banyana, if we're being honest, they perform, has, way. They perform way better than, than Bafana, Bafana, Bafana. 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 <laughs> So they're always advanced. Uh, the, boys. <laughs> the boys always disappoint us. We yeah. always know that you know, the boys are going to disappoint. Mm -hmm. But Banyana Banyana, they hardly disappoint. Yeah. So they should be paid exactly the same amount as Bafana mm -hmm. Bafana. They are wearing colors of the country. They are representing all of us. Mm -hmm. Why should they be treated differently? Mm -hmm. So that should come to an end. Women in sport should be treated equally. Look what happened to uh, our star, Casta Simenya, mm -hmm. how she was treated internationally because they were shocked that there's a black woman mm -hmm. who can run so fast and had so much speed yeah. and so much confidence and about the body. bring the baseless issues of testosterone yes. and that she's not just uh, to remove her from yeah. competing. Mm -hmm. Why? Because she's black. That's what happens to Africans, uh, not only in South Africa, all over the world. Mm -hmm. That's how black women are treated. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, uh, Commissar, the struggles of uh, before the dawn of democracy and now in the democratic dispensation are quite different. Yeah. Uh, we've seen the likes of Mama Wini in the you know, liberation struggle of the apartheid years, uh, fighting the system head on. What do you think the current generation of youth or women uh, need to focus on uh, to liberate uh, South Africa? I think our main focus should be economic freedom in our lifetime. How so? We need to fight. Uh, it, it's just uh, 30 years later into democracy. Mm -hmm. We're still fighting for basic things like access to higher education. Mm -hmm. That's a struggle. Every year you should check the stats of um, matriculants who make it to matric and who actually pass vis-a-vis -vis mm -hmm. 12 years ago when the same learners registered for grade one. Mm -hmm. Check them 12 years later, they just disappear. Uh, no one is accountable where are these learners who started grade one. Mm -hmm. So I think women of this country we should fight mm -hmm. for access to higher education and it should be free and compulsory for all mm -hmm. so that we have a society of educated women and educated uh, men in society in general. Mm -hmm. Number two, we should fight for access to land. If you want to start a business, there's no business you can operate in the air. A simple thing, a saloon, Sure. You need <laughs> to have a structure yeah. where it can operate. Mm -hmm. To run a, a small business like selling quarter or chips, mm -hmm. what do you need? Land where you're going to be operating from. And where do you get the products if you're going to be selling quarter? You need the potatoes. Potatoes, they come from the land. Mm -hmm. So those are the issues that women of this country should take up. Issues of economic freedom mm -hmm. in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Because once we attain economic freedom in our lifetime, some social ills we're going to be able to easily deal with. Now, issues of crime and corruption, once we deal with issues of inequalities in mm -hmm. society, then we generally going to deal with other societal ills yeah. uh, in the making. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating 11 years of unbroken struggle. Uh, yeah, yeah. You have been uh, now deployed in um, Pumalanga. What can we expect in as far as the struggle for economic emancipation uh, you know, uh, is concerned? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking forward to my new deployment of Pumalanga. Mm -hmm. um, so what we can expect is that um, Pumalanga has, uh, is rich in mineral resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, really we're looking forward to going to the uh, mining communities and seeing how our people live and ensuring that we, make, we take our people with us to fight the injustices that are happening. Mm -hmm. Look at the calls that is living. Uh, with bank, mitli bank, mm -hmm. uh, on a daily basis, mm -hmm. leaving Pumalanga, leaving people of Emalathen in die poverty, mm -hmm. leaving the communities of Mittelberg sick because of the mining uh, that is happening in their community. Mm -hmm. What do they have to show? Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. There's no jobs for the people there. Go and check the, the poverty levels of Emalathen and Mittelberg. It's sad, mm -hmm. but they are rich in mineral resources. Mm -hmm. What happens to those mineral resources? Yeah. So we need to take our community with us. We must never ever get tired to educate society about the importance of us as a country owning the land and owning our mineral resources in order to benefit us and benefit our communities. Mm -hmm. So that is the struggles we're looking forward to. And also Mpumalang is very rich in farming, but who is farming the land?
-hmm. How are, our, are the farm workers treated in these farms? Mm -hmm. It's very sad. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Titus, I was born and grew up in a small village called Tricopis. In commerce, in municipality. Oh, yeah. you're from Kumala. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you know the struggles. I know the head. struggles. Yeah. Uh, there, there's sugar cane. Yeah. Uh, they are farming sugar cane. Mm -hmm. Then go to RCL where they process the sugar cane mm -hmm. into sugar now. As the farm, uh, farm owners, in fact, how they get treated by this company, mm -hmm. the farm workers there. Let's go and change the lives of our people. Yeah. I speak this because I know it personally, how the farm owners there who farm sugar cane get treated by the company that is processing the sugar. Mm -hmm. So those are the struggles we're looking forward to yeah. uh, in Pumalang. Okay, as we, we wrap up, this is Women's Month. Mm -hmm. Is there enough to celebrate throughout the course of this month? Uh, what would you say if we had the authority to guide this uh, GNU? What do you think this month should be, uh, how, how this month or this Women's Month should be uh, uh, observed? If we were to guide this GNU, mm -hmm. first thing they should do is give free sanitary hours to all. Should pass that legislation that sanitary, in fact, you don't need to pass legislation. Mm -hmm. It should just be pronouncement by the president that sanitary towels will be made available at all public spaces for anyone to take. That's the first thing. There's poverty of sanitary towels in this country and no one wants to talk about it besides the EFF. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Number two, mm -hmm. to establish special uh, uh, courts to mm -hmm. deal with issues of GPV. Mm -hmm. That should be a priority. If yep. they can do that and get judges to work 24 hours in, at their specialized courts mm -hmm. to deal with issues of gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Number three, ensure that anyone who witnesses domestic violence happening mm -hmm. should have the right to open a criminal case and the police should be allowed to investigate the matter as it's reported by someone who witnessed this happening. Mm -hmm. That should be a lot and give women access to land. Mm -hmm. Let us farm mm -hmm. and declare yeah. education free for all and accessible mm -hmm. and build more institutions mm -hmm. of higher learning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then that yeah. will be the right we'll step in the, the Yes. Mm -hmm. So let me quickly rise to uh, Commissar Sengwem Khalif who is standing by. Uh, happy birthday, uh, Kovisa, to the only emancipation movement in Africa. And welcome to the uh, EFF podcast. Thank you very much. Happy birthday indeed to the EFF. Mm -hmm. uh, we are 11 years old. Yeah. And we were born on the 26th of July in 2013. We are coming to celebrate our 11 years of existence in Northern Cape, here in Kimberley. Mm -hmm. um, it has been a journey, a very interesting journey. When we were formed on 26th July in 2013, mm -hmm. two months down the line, we contested national elections, mm -hmm. of which we're four months old. We are building, we are contesting national elections with no resources. But zero we, resources. Zero resources. But we made it mm. because we had 25 members of parliament on 2014. Yeah. It has been an interesting journey, though. Because even on local elections, we played a very vital role. Mm -hmm. uh, we were also a decider in most of the municipalities. Yeah, I can say that we are happy that mm -hmm. we are still here mm -hmm. after 11 years. Yeah. And as a founding member, uh, or rather the founding DSG of the EFF, uh, I think in 2014, or 2013 rather, uh, are you... A happy at all with what the EFF was able to achieve over the years and what has been uh, some of your fondest memories and perhaps the, the contribution to the cause of economic emancipation? We changed the status quo of the country. The moment mm -hmm. we formed in 2013, mm -hmm. we have managed to recruit people to join the EFF because of our ideas and our ideology. And as a youngest party with no resources, because we rely on the resources from parliament. Mm -hmm. The resources from parliament, we converted them to be the resources that help community. Remember, we are the, poor, we are the organization for the poorest of the poor. Mm -hmm. So when we, have, when we were celebrating 10 years last year, we have legacy project all over the country with the little resources. The legacy, the legacy project was for the poorest of the poor. We went to children's home that uh, the government is not helping at all. Mm -hmm. 
social development is there as a department but is not coming to the fore. We have identified those projects whereby people thought that no one cares for mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. In the process before even last year, we were building houses of poor people. Mm -hmm. We identified those people who can't even afford to build their houses. We intervened. We took children to school uh, as EFF. We paid school fees. We have played a very important role in the lives of people mm -hmm. as the organization, as public representatives as well. There's a policy in the EFF that a public rep must go and adopt a school, an informal yeah. settlement, or a crash. But you must go and give back to the community. You must not just go to parliament only, but the community must know that there is a public rep of EFF here in this particular ward. Mm -hmm. And you've been deployed in the portfolio committee on COCTA in Parliament. Uh, what are some of the interventions, the motions? I understand you are very robust in Parliament. And uh, what are some of the uh, uh, key interventions or rather motions that you put forward to ensure that the needs of the people um, are in fact are covered or addressed rather? As we speak now, there is two meetings that had took place already mm -hmm. at a COCTA portfolio committee. The first meeting, it was an introduction of this arrangement of GNU minister, Minister Sabisa. Mm -hmm. When he came and introduced himself, I said to the department, it's well enough mm -hmm. to have a new minister, but let us go back to basic. On the last administration, there is an issue of Babun Lovu in KZN in Glenmore, who woke up one of the morning with an inflated bill of water. The bill was like 200,000. He's a pensioner. He wrote back to the municipality, said, no, this is a kind of a mistake. Mm -hmm. So this matter, I've been fighting on behalf of the EFF for that poor person in KZN, who is a pensioner who does not have money, who has also been robbed by the municipality of the Queen. Mm -hmm. I was very glad, you know, I'm still glad, even this morning, uh, the children of Bamdlovo is very, they're very happy. To, to learn that the bill or the debt that Babun Luvu was told that he have, it has been cancelled. Mm -hmm. So we have been intervening as members of the of the uh, or, or EFF in different political uh, portfolio committees that we are uh, serving. Mm -hmm. And now we are 11 years. What are you looking forward to uh, in as far as uh, growth is concerned? Uh, you understand we, as a country, we go into elections every five years. Uh, do you anticipate the EFF uh, to grow in the future? Yes, EFF is growing. It is growing because to be a member of the EFF, to serve in a particular structure in the EFF, it does not mean that you are just a leader with a position. We are expected to go and sweat mm -hmm. on the ground. Mm -hmm. We are expected to go and talk to people. We are expected to go and say to people, this is the only political party that is here for you. All other political parties have been proven not for the people. Mm -hmm. So we are very positive on my side that you are going to grow beyond. Mm -hmm. Look, the organization has established different desks. For instance, the gender-based violence desk, because there is a crisis in the country whereby our women are, are attacked on daily basis. The DSG was leading the, the DGPV desk, and I was leading as the head of labor desk, the labor desk, mm -hmm. which intervened a lot to the issues of workers. Mm -hmm. In this country, the labor laws are not meant to protect the poorest of the poor, not meant to protect the workers, are meant to protect the employers, mm -hmm. rather. Mm -hmm. So with this desk established by the organization in 2020, we have done wonders. People even in the HQ, in our office, there is a long queues on daily basis to come to say, please intervene. We mm -hmm. have... Um, those people call unions, mm -hmm. but people, they lost trust completely from them. That's why they opt to come to the labor desk. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to say that we are going to grow. We are going to grow. But 
as people who are serving at the CCT level, PCT level, regional level, as a branch level, we must have strong branches. Mm -hmm. We must know what each and every corner of the world entails. Mm -hmm. We must know issues. We must go and tackle issues. We must come back with the report to the communities. So when we were formed in 2013, that's exactly our position, that we are the protest movement. If there's a protest in Ward 33, a Kimberley, we must be there at the forefront, championing issues of the people on the ground. Mm -hmm. We must take those issues and give it to our public representatives. Right when we, here in Kimberley, as we are mobilizing towards our uh, celebration on the 27th of July, we go to the communities, we are saying that to communities, we are here to invite you to come and celebrate with us. Commander-in-Chief is going to be the, our guest speaker on the day. But communities, they are always raising issues. Well enough, we are going to come and join you uh, in Arapa Stadium. But here is the problem. I don't have water. Mm -hmm. We don't have electricity. We don't have this sewer pipe. We take those issues from the community. We give it to our public representatives from the councillors to the legislatures, to, na to, to, to the national uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, assembly. Mm -hmm. And the motions that you were asking me about are okay. not the motions that are out of Hengiwe's head. <laughs> it's the motion that yeah. is emanated mm -hmm. from the people when mm -hmm. we go to collect uh, their uh, issues. Because on the we're a listening uh, organization. Yes. And, yeah. and I'm trying to say we are going to grow. Mm -hmm. It's just that we need to build a very strong branches. Mm -hmm. You must be there with the people. You must be part and parcel of the people. You must not be isolate yourself and be an elite against the people. That is not EFF. EFF is for the people. Mm -hmm. Do you see the EFF um, rising above and uh, also advancing the interest of the poor in the face of uh, this uh, GNU? You've cited the issues of uh, motions. Don't you think that perhaps now that the Speaker of Parliament is from the ANC and the Deputy Speaker is from the DA, somehow the two parties may collude and try to block the EFF and perhaps reject even the most uh, fundamental motions that are on the side of the people? We are going to fight more than before in terms of raising issues in Parliament since there is this arrangement of coalition between ANC and the DA, and mm -hmm. they call it GNU, mm -hmm. but it's just a pure coalition. Mm -hmm. For instance, ANC got more votes, mm -hmm. and the DA is the second mm -hmm. a, a political party receive votes. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the law and the constitution, DA is supposed to be the opposition in parliament. Mm -hmm. But they form the coalition now, so DA is in government with the ANC. Mm -hmm. So the official opposition as we stand in Parliament is mm -hmm. we Sizwe, mm -hmm. which is the third largest political party but becomes an opposition since DA have formed a coalition. Yeah. So we are the third largest political party in terms of the opposition. Mm -hmm. If you can go now to the parliamentary archives now as we have open Parliament, you'll realize mm -hmm. that we are flowing with issues. Yeah. Whether speaker or the deputy speaker does not like what you are raising, mm -hmm. there are rules. We even pushed now to amend the rules to recognize Mkonto Wissizwe to be the official opposition. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't, they were not prepared. They wanted to be in government, SDA, and then two, to occupy the benches of opposition. We said, no way. Mm -hmm. Go and be with the ANC. It must be, a clear line must be drawn. Good, you are with the ANC. We even push them to say the sitting arrangements in Parliament must reflect that you are governing with DA. I can tell you now, my brother, mm -hmm. DA is suffocating. In Rules Committee, in Chief Use Forum, in the Programming Committee, when they used to be very robust and raising each and everything, mm -hmm. they are quiet as if they are not there. Mm -hmm. They are compromised as we speak. Yeah. So that is the opportunity for us, EFF, and also other Progressive Caucus, because we have formed a block called Progressive Caucus in uh -huh. Parliament. Uh -huh. But with our experience since 2014, we are the one who's raising issues and also criticizing the Parliament, telling the Parliament, this time we must not be the Parliament that is ticking boxes, but you must be the Parliament that is resolving the issues of the people from the ground. For mm -hmm. instance, during the workshop, the first week was the workshop, mm -hmm. they were explaining what is the role of parliament. One of the roles they explain is public participation. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And then I raised my hand. Can you explain? How are you saying that part of the role as the parliament, the public must participate? Mm -hmm. There was an, um, an, a, a motion that was raised by parliament, land expropriation without compensation. Uh -huh. And we went to public hearing in all parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Not even a single community where we went as parliament was opposing for the uh, motion to be processed in a way we suggested, to expropriate land without compensation, to change the constitution close 25. Mm -hmm. But we came to parliament as the ANC and parliament and agree not to reflect the, what people were saying on the ground. Mm -hmm. So what participation are we talking about? Yeah. This time the public participation must be the public participation. We must respect what the public is telling the parliament what must be done. Mm -hmm. Compromise as, as it is, the African National Congress uh, in the GNU, do you see the ANC or rather the state led by or led through the GNU, uh, do you see them being able to condemn the Israeli occupation of Palestinian land given that the likes of the Democratic Alliance hold a different view? They are not. They are no longer there now. The DA have influenced them. Remember there is a resolution of the parliament even mm -hmm. to close the embassy. And towards the end of the term, we raise, we made a follow-up as EFP. We would know there's a resolution in this house. Mm -hmm. How far? And we even wrote to the Minister of International um, Affairs. Mm -hmm. And she told us that, no, that matter is being processed in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. We are going to uh, open that issue again. I need to want to expose them. Yes. The issue of embassy, mm -hmm. the issue of Palapal. Do you remember that DA was supporting the issue of yes, Palapal as yes. a motion? But now because they've been bought through positions, <laughs> they've been silenced. They're busy eating, mm -hmm. enjoying blue lights. Mm -hmm. So we are going to expose each and every issue that was raised in the previous administration. Yeah. And you are going to raise more issues that is going to prove to them, no, Nina, we have sold out people of South Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, you touched on the issues of uh, GBV, and um, in the month of August, we celebrate, it's known as Women's Month here in South Africa. Uh, what are some of the key areas that the EFF has been focusing on over the past 11 years to ensure that the, the plight of the, the, the woman is you know, alleviated, is taken into consideration? And um, throughout this uh, Women's Month, what are some of the important programs that you think should be rolled out to ensure that you know, we address issues of uh, GBV which are still rife in South Africa? You know, what you said is the Minister of Police going to the podium mm -hmm. and lying to the South African, especially to women, mm -hmm. to say there's a GBV desk in all police station. Mm -hmm. I'm walking to the police station I want to report the issue of rape. There is not even a small room whereby my dignity is going to be protected. I must speak here in front of everyone. That is n one number one issue. And the laws in parliament mm -hmm. must be strengthened to protect women. And there is a department of women, children, and people live with disability, mm -hmm. with no resources. Yeah. We begin to ask yourself, why even this, this department exists? Because we are dealing with a very serious issue here. On a daily basis, women disappeared. Mm -hmm. And we are like crunching on daily basis to... We don't know if this young woman is going to be found or not. But now the state mm -hmm. is not providing every resources to ensure good to every woman, even young women. The issue of unemployment as well is the cause of this thing because our young women trust Guti, this website that they have said I have got a job mm -hmm. I must go for an interview Gandhi they are going to be killed those are the issues that as EFF GPV and the EFF at large they were very vocal in terms of protecting women on the month of August we are going to continue to say to the uh, department of police make sure those desks that we have announced now during the budget votes are mm -hmm. existing. Mm -hmm. We are going to ask each and every report, weekly report on issues that we have done before. DSG was very vocal, going to the, uh, uh, with women, going to 
to court mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. with w with the the victims yes. of GPV. So mm -hmm. I think we must make follow up on those issues mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. As we wind up uh, former DSG, uh, what is the legacy that you you would like to leave in the EFF and also for the people of uh, South Africa as a politician, as a public servant? Is to achieve the economic freedom in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Because this economy does not serve the poorest of the poor. It's mm -hmm. still serving the white establishment. Mm -hmm. So if that legacy can be achieved, I will die very happy as the first um, um, people who have been part and parcel of the EFF since its inception. Mm -hmm. First battalion. Mm -hmm. That's what will make us to be very happy. Yeah. The issue of land expropriation without compensation. We want that land. If we can achieve all the seven cardinal pillars, which is the backbone of the EFF, one may die very peacefully yeah. uh, and rest. Yeah. And what peace. is your view on the um, female representation in the EFF uh, structures, be it nationally, provincially, and, and locally? It's the only political party that is doing well in terms mm -hmm. of the uh, representation. Mm -hmm. Even in parliament now, if you go and check the list mm -hmm. of the EFF, we are, as women, we are more than men. It has been a policy in the EFF. We do zebra approach. We're starting from our structure. We have six officials, three are male, three are females. You go to all legislatures, go to council, even in the coming, oh, this incoming uh, 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 NPA, mm -hmm. we are going to have more women as delegates. We don't compromise on the women. Mm -hmm. We believe. Bogoto must rise. Ma Bogoto yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. So, as a as a parting shot, we were here, or we are here at the Arabas uh, Stadium in Kimberley. Uh, what is your message to the people of um, uh, Northern Cape, in as far as um, their issues of lack of water, you know, issues of electricity, issues of unemployment is concerned? Obviously, the EFF is the last hope. Yes. People of Kimberley, people of Northern Cape, people of all other regions in the Northern Cape, they must know that we have offices in every region. Mm -hmm. So in those offices, there are secretaries who are full-time. All public reps are coordinated by the head of, um, of the province, which are the chairs. Mm -hmm. So they must take those issues to the, our offices. They must take those issues to our public reps. They must take those issues to the secretaries region or in the province to say we have this issue as a convener here i also have some more issues to deal with there's uh, one uh, lady who just called me today before this interview to say mm -hmm. i'm the school teacher here but i'm being exploited by the principal i said hey come on monday after we have done with our celebration let us sit down because we take issues of the communities very serious mm -hmm. so they must bring those issues we are glad to take those issues and process them. Mm -hmm. In fact, the mayor in Kimberley, Solplati, is a young guy, but he used to be our member as EFF student command in Northwest. Mm -hmm. So when I arrived here, I said, we are going to come to your office with issues, chief. Whether now we are ANC, we have sold out, <laughs> sold out, but you remain the mayor. Yeah. So we are going to make you to account on each and every day. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, all issues they must be brought forward. Mm -hmm. We are going to tackle them through the various departments and also go and table them in parliament through the motions, member statements, etc. Song of the day? Song of the day, Winnie Monday. Winnie this Monday. Was <laughs> Please, we need it. <laughs> we and need uh, it. Yeah, and may the spirit of uh, Mama Winnie, Winnie, Mama Winnie, Winnie lives on indeed. Yes, yeah. uh, you know, she's a queen mother. She multiplied mm -hmm. in all of us. Mm -hmm. May we all aspire to be like Mama Winnie. Mm -hmm. uh, never sell out the struggle of economic freedom mm -hmm. in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, yeah. we must always be loyal mm -hmm. to South Africa yeah. and to the people of South Africa yeah. and to economic freedom yeah. in our lifetime. That's what Mama Winnie stood for. She was always, always loyal to people of South Africa. Mm -hmm. She ensured that she fights 
for us. She never left the people of South Africa. Even when they put her in a house arrest, mm -hmm. she continued to fight. Mm -hmm. May all young women of this country and the old women of this country, may they all be like Mama Winnie, always side with the people, always never sell out mm -hmm. the struggle of economic freedom in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. That's something must ha that must happen. Mm -hmm. So we are not like a... Uh, is ANC. The ANC has sold out. It has, uh, yes, has sold absolutely. out. Um, it's said mm -hmm. uh, the next five years is going to be harsh mm -hmm. for women and people of South Africa generally. Mm -hmm. We feel sad, but there's nothing we can do. That's the outcome of democracy. Yeah. 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 But we must never get tired of educating our people mm -hmm. to understand what the EFF stands for and what is it that we want to give to them. People of South Africa need to love themselves and choose the best government. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so happy, much. Happy Women's Month to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Omanda. Yeah, Omanda. Right. Happy 11 years. Happy 11 years indeed. <laughs>